Happy Happy Wednesday, everyone. As promised last time, I now actually have a beer. Um, this is my summer ale. I'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, I just wanted to update you, guys, update you guys on what I've been doing. Um, my cider and porter have continued in primary fermentation since last time. The cider has actually finally started to abate in terms of the primary fermentation um, after like uh, nine days. So it's, it's continued to ferment quite a long time. It's the first time I've done any cider or anything like that. Um, I'm surprised how long it sort of continued to be active for. It's uh, compared to beer, it seems like it's taken quite a while. I've not, I've never brewed any massively high um, gravity beers or anything like that, but it seems like a, a long time. And the porter finished quite a while ago. I'm just leaving it in the, the primary on the on the yeast to just you know smooth out the flavours a bit and leave it for a while. Um, I'll probably be, my, my parents are coming uh, up for the weekend, um, so I probably won't, I, I would have kegged them on the weekend, um, but, uh, but I won't be for that for that reason, but I'll leave a few more days. In addition to that, um, over the weekend just gone, um, I decided that I, I need to clean out my garage, which is full of all of my, my beer making equipment, basically when it's not in the kitchen for me to brew with. Um, it's also got uh, my my motorbike and my girlfriend's scooter in it, so and a load of like gardening stuff and you know the usual sort of stuff. It's only a little new house, small garage, so um, not even enough, not really enough room to park your car in that kind of garage. Um, so hence why we don't we put the car on the on the drive anyway. Um, I was clearing out the garage because I thought shit, I need to make some more space for my brewing stuff because um, I've been on a bit of an eBay splurge. And I went to look for this like plastic pressure barrel that I was going to rack this uh, porter to, and it wasn't there. Um, so I must have got rid of that at some point. <laughs> um, so it went after you know not doing homebrew for a while, I guess these things happen. So um, at the moment I am getting into cornies. So I've got I've got one corny at the moment, which is what this is in. Um, and uh, as as they tend to do, they're multiplying. So, but like I said, I've been an eBay splurge, so I've got two more cornies on the way. Perfect timing, otherwise, what on earth would I have done with my porter? You know, needs must. So, I've got two more cornies um, on the way, so I can put, put a porter in that and then have another brew. I figure three lots of beer at any one time is kind of a minimum, you know. Don't you know, remove the temptation to drink it when it's too young, like I kind of am now, even though it's quite a light beer, so it's not too bad. Um, so I'm doing that. Uh, I could bottle. I've done quite a bit of bottling before, but I just can't bother with it really. Um, I don't have any no-rinse sanitizer, and that might make things a lot easier, and, and like such star sand, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to get some of that stuff anyway. But bottling was just a, a pain in the neck for me. I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't deal with it. Uh, the cider and the porter, um, they're both just sitting. I had to bring them downstairs because they were they were fermenting, kind of kind of warm. Um, I got one of these stick-on thermometers, LCD thermometers, for the side of my my bucket, my fermenting vessel bucket, and uh, that was saying at twenty. To, but then it crept up to 24 degrees, and I put my glass, you know, um, glass thermometer in there that I use in the uh, when I'm sort of measuring the temperature of the, the liquids and stuff when I'm brewing, and that that's a two degrees different, which is like it's a bit concerning, um, but it was two degrees the wrong way as well. It said 26, so I thought that's too warm. I'm going to bring it down. Um, so it's, I think it's about 22 degrees now in the middle of my house. I live in one of these townhouses, which is not very big, but on three stories, so temperatures kind of fluctuates quite a lot from top to bottom. Um, so actually, this porter seemed to be. Uh, I was a bit worried at one stage because it was smelling it a bit off, like a little bit sulphurous, a little bit kind of twangy, a bit funky. 
Uh, I was a bit worried, just having to sniff underneath the, the lid kind of thing. Um, but it seems to have cleared up, you know, obviously I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells fine now. It's really weird. I took a gravity reading on my course the other day, which was uh, 112. So, I think it's probably finished there, to be honest. It hasn't been bubbling away at all, as far as I can tell. I've not been sitting by it to see if it bubbles every three minutes or something, but it looks like it's finished. Yeah, just to talk about gravity readings in general, I've always had a hydrometer since I started brewing, but um, I'm not always the most disciplined about sort of processes and things for brewing, so um, I always found myself taking it like an original gravity meet, uh, original gra an original gravity reading on in the in the bucket um, when I sort of aerated the water and it was really foamy and I've continued to do that and, and did it with the porter in fact so you can't actually properly tell what the reading is you're kind of guessing it uh, looks like it's about 140 or whatever um, so it's only really recently that I've, I've, I've always had a test jar I've always stupidly thought I'm wasting a lot of beer if I sort of start taking taking out in the test jar, but I just had to think about it, and obviously it's like a hundred mils, which is a fraction, a, a tiny fraction of the total brew length. So I'm, I'm making a concerted effort not only to to do that, but to do things like keep, um, better record keeping, so I can start, um, you know, taking a bit more pride in the whole thing and. Uh, and also if I start getting to extract and brewing and that sort of thing, keeping an eye of what, what recipes I'm using so I can have a bit of a tweak and a play with things. So, um, gravity readings is one of those things that I'm trying to, that I'm, I'm planning to improve on. Um, so, like I said, I took a, took a, a gravity reading in my, unfortunately, I'll do it was 1012. I'm not quite sure, obviously, what the original gravity was. Um, but I think that's, I think that's pretty much finished. I was wondering actually if anybody out there has ideas about or or experience of taking gravity readings from brews like cider or wine or whatever it be in demijohns in the little carboy things because um, I think I, I'm going to have to put my hydrometer into the demijohn itself because you know how I was saying just now about the test jar being 100 mils and not being very much of a a five gallon batch or whatever, it is quite a lot out of a one gallon batch, UK gallon batch, like four and a half litres. Um, and so I think given the height of the of the liquid of my cider within the Demijohn, it's, I don't think there's a chance that my um, hydrometer is going to slip down under the shoulder or anything, obviously I don't want to get stuck in there. Um, so I was thinking I was just going to actually just whip the airlock off and pop the hydrometer in there it's in itself take a reading within that so I won't waste any hot cider and it should do the job. Um, if anyone's got a better way of doing that uh, I'd, I'd be really interested to know. I'm kind of reluctant to take the cider out and put it back in again or whatever just to want to try and avoid aeration and contamination wherever possible you know obviously. Um, what else? Uh, I've been as part of my eBay splurge, apart from some random stuff like in a badminton racket uh, I got myself because I just need to get a bit fitter. Five side football's been um, knocked on the head at work, so I need to start thinking about doing other stuff. 
Um, and we're drinking more of this. I probably need to overcompensate by doing twice as much exercise. That's the that's the plan anyway. Um, apart from that, I've been getting a little bit into winemaking. Uh, in that you can't really help but see stuff about winemaking when you go into your local homebrew shop and all that. Especially my one is actually called Creative Winemaking. It's a few um, miles away from me in Spondon in Derby. Um, and so I think you get the impression they tend more towards the, the wine than the than the, the beer actually. There's more wine stuff um, there and, and that's what the, the owners tend to sort of know more about, that kind of thing. Anyway, I quite fancy the idea of wine. I like my wine. And also I quite like the idea of doing sort of relatively small batches and and maybe even if it's a larger batch you kind of almost get more mileage out of it than a beer and it's nice I like the idea of giving a bottle of wine to family and friends and that sort of thing so got myself a book first steps in wine making it's a bit of a, a a bastion of the British wine making literature scene by the looks of it and it's really interesting it's all about obviously the process a little bit like um, the, the brewing book I've got how to brew um, but obviously it's got recipes in it as well so <clears throat> and it's like by month and that sort of thing so you've got like August golden rod wine <laughs> that sounds hilarious um, carrot wine and that sort of stuff that doesn't sound that great but I'm sure that, I'm sure it's really nice <laughs> um, cherry wine that sounds pretty nice anyway point being I'm thinking about getting into wine a little bit a colleague of mine at work um, actually, we got I got talked to him not a, a while ago about home brewing because he does a bit of home brew. He just like, throws kits together and stuff like that. But he also makes his own wine. Um, he goes foraging for elderberries, blackberries, that sort of thing. And he actually gave me a bottle of his black his elderberry wine the other day. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. Fantastic. So I'm going to be doing that. I think. So I got I got myself a a wine fermenter. Right, yeah, so maybe time to talk about this festival beer then. When I poured this a little while ago, it wasn't there wasn't very much more beer in there than there is now and the head was taking up the rest of the space. Um so a little bit over carbonated slash overzealous with the the pressure in my corny. But it's my first corny actually, so it's it's like a it's a bit of a seminal moment for me because I had a plastic pressure barrel in bottles before. And it was kind of a, a bit of a dipping my toe into the water, a new thing, and it's it's it's, it's, it's dead good. I love it. Um, obviously, I've got I got myself a big CO2 bottle from a horticultural place over in Nottingham, and uh, that's going to last me forever. I've got um, obviously a corny, and I've got a regulator as well off eBay again, like 24 quid, 24 pounds, whatever. Um, so I've got myself set up. It cost a little bit to get yourself set up, but. I definitely recommend it. Um, it's just it's just a really easy easy to keep your your beer nice and kind of safe in terms of pressurised and sort of sanitised and even for quite a while whatever. Had a few problems sealing it at first because um, they have pressure pressure lids basically. The the lids are kept on by the pressure pushing them out into um, into the rim of the of the lid um, with the, with the gasket to seal it. Um, so that didn't work the first few times, but I knew it worked because it was delivered to me pressurised. Um, but the edge was the edge was a bit of the lid was a bit misshapen, sort of the around. So, um, so I thought it might be might have to return it or something. But it kind of it's a it's like an overall elliptical shape the lid. So all I did was I flipped it around the other way and sealed it and pressurised it and it went back and it's fine. That's about it for this week. I don't know how long this is. I'm pretty new to this video editing malarkey, so I don't know how long this video is going to be once I've edited it down a little bit. Um, I'd imagine it's probably quite a lot, long way short of 10 minutes. So, cheers. See you next week. Okay, it'll be Wednesday in 17. 17. <laughs>